Hi, I'm Janie. Welcome back to the JC Leak House. As you can see, we've made quite a mess here. Let me tell you what's been going on. In the city of Galveston, the city has a right of way on the sidewalks, but the maintenance of the sidewalk is actually the owner's responsibility. So I'm responsible for the condition of the sidewalk. Now the city, overall, the sidewalks are in terrible condition. So they were looking for a way to try to encourage homeowners to repair their sidewalks. The city actually got a lot of grant money and they're using that to do a cost sharing. So if the homeowner agrees, the city will pay for the labor and the homeowner pays for the material to replace the sidewalk. Let me show you what my sidewalk looked like when I bought the house. You can see the sidewalks are in pretty bad shape. They were cracked and heaved up in places. Most of that damage was caused by the tree roots of the oak trees that are planted along the street. It was interesting that the sidewalk was just this thin layer of concrete poured over some crushed granite. There's no steel mesh or rebar or anything in there, so it's no wonder it lifted up and broke so easy. Before I found out about the city plan, my first plan had been to break this out by hand because it actually shatters pretty easily because of the way that it's made. There's a free concrete dump site nearby. I've been there before with you if you remember my lovely hair video. And I thought that every week I could do a little section and over the course of the month get the sidewalk out with my free labor and free disposal. And then I had to have my contractor, Robert, come pour a new sidewalk. Sidewalks and driveways are his specialty. Thank goodness I didn't get very far before I found out about the city sidewalk program because I've had rotator cuff surgery on both shoulders. And if you notice my awkward sledgehammer swing, I can't actually rotate my arms above my head the way I used to be able to. So this was going to be a slow and somewhat painful process. Actually, someone told me on the home tour about the sidewalk program a year ago last May, and I immediately applied. I've just now moved up the list. It's kind of first come, first serve to where the city's notified me uh, that they're ready to do my sidewalk. Now, there's a catch to it. I had to be responsible for removing all the tree roots that were in the way, and it actually caused quite a bit of delay because there was some debate. You can see these sidewalks are about 10 feet wide and they wanted the tree roots removed a foot beyond the edge of the sidewalk. Well, here's the edge of my sidewalk. If I went a foot in, I would basically have to take out my trees. You can see here that the sidewalk is already up well past the tree trunk. Because the sidewalk is so wide, there's just this little tiny strip of ground for the trees to grow in and these trunks can get massive. Now there's nothing that says the sidewalk has to be 10 feet. The city quoted me 10 feet because that's what was here originally. So I've been working with them to come up with a plan to actually put a smaller sidewalk in. If you look down the street, you can see that in the next block, the sidewalk's only about five feet wide. So what the city has agreed to do is in this section, they're going to put back a six foot sidewalk. It'll make a nice wide pathway and it will actually leave me a lot more green space between the sidewalk and the curb so that the trees have room to grow. I need to do a lot of replanting. A lot of these trees were damaged in Ike and actually they're kind of dying and on their way out. So I want to get some new trees started so they have a chance to grow. Since we're out here talking about tree roots, I want to show you something that I think is really sad. It was sad for the whole island and everyone here. In Hurricane Ike, there was probably four and a half to five feet of salt water over this whole area. And the really old oaks were stressed and died. So you can see across the back of the property, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight of these gigantic stumps that are left. Each of those would have been an incredible 110-year-old oak tree when Ike hit. And the root systems are expansive. Some of it seems to be rotting above ground, but what we found when we were digging is that below ground, they're still pretty solid. So these are just a reminder of that devastation that happened in Ike. Ricardo and his guys have already done the tree root removal. Let me show you a little bit of that process. 
After we marked how far back the roots needed to come out, the guys started removing the sidewalk and digging so they could see what they were dealing with. Instead of just being like tendrils of roots coming out, there was actually this big mass of root underground. We thought it might be somewhat rotted because Hurricane Ike was in 2008, and that was 14 years ago. But instead, it's almost like they're petrified. They were just hard as stone and difficult to deal with. It was very labor intensive and took quite a bit of time and much of the sidewalk had to come out to get to the roots. It was making me wonder just how much money I was going to save because by the time these guys were through, a lot of the sidewalk would be removed already. These roots were so hard, my contribution was running back and forth to Home Depot to buy new chainsaw blades. Not only were the roots hard, but you're cutting through where there's a lot of sand and grit and dirt, and it dulls the blades really quick. Someday I'm going to have to learn how to sharpen a chainsaw blade. I know it can be done because I see the tree guys do it all the time, and I've got a big box full of dull ones. We've made quite the mess and now I'm back to waiting on the city to revise the cost estimate so that I can pay and move forward. The good news is that since these are going to be 6 feet wide and not 10 feet wide, that's 40% cheaper than it was going to be. And that's a lot of cost savings because of how long the sidewalk is down the side. And on the front, it's going to be about 10% cheaper because we're going from 10 feet to 9 feet. So that's a little bit of savings there. I'm a little anxious for the city to go ahead and get this done because it's a big mess right now and it's going to look so much nicer when it's finished. I told you that the city had a right-of-way but that the homeowner is actually responsible for the sidewalk and that's been true in Galveston forever. Because of that there's no consistency as to what the sidewalks look like or if a house even has a sidewalk in front of it. It's always been up to the homeowner. As you walk around the streets, there's some remarkable examples of the old original sidewalks in front of these houses. Let me show you a few. This is the Troub Castle, which is just across the street on the east side of the J.C. League house towards the back. It has this incredible black and white marble checkerboard sidewalk, which you can see is in horrible condition. I was working one day and I looked over and there was this older woman kind of clinging to the fence and she just didn't look quite right to me. Something was wrong. So I ran over there and it turns out she had tripped on the sidewalk and fallen and hurt herself pretty badly. I had to call 911 to get an ambulance for her. So these sidewalks are a hazard and something needs to be done about them. So I'm very grateful to be able to participate in this program and go ahead and get mine taken care of. This is a house that's just in the next block to the east of me. It also faces Broadway. And it has this great black and red terracotta sidewalk that actually extends across two houses. So it's a very long, intact stretch. This black and red terracotta was apparently very common. You see traces of it all over this area, but none quite this extensive or in such good shape. I found an article about the opening of the Lucas Apartments and it also had red terracotta, but in a different pattern than this sidewalk. Another slightly different variation of the terracotta can be found in front of Ashton Villa. Ashton Villa is one of the first brick houses built in Texas in 1859. It's now owned and operated and preserved by the Galveston Historical Foundation. It's a beautiful house and has some exquisite detail. Just look at this amazing iron fence around it and how detailed and beautiful this gate post is. 
Unlike the Leak House, where the fence was removed and raised with the island, the fence at Ashton Villa was just left where it was and buried under about two feet of fill. You can see that the design of this fence looks asymmetrical. That diamond design at the bottom used to be centered in the fence. And here's the corner post. It's also just amazing in its detail. It's just fantastic. As I was walking around looking for sidewalks to show you, I came across a few of these, which are fun. This is an old carriage stone or carriage step. And they were just raised big stones so that when a carriage pulled up, you could step out and have something to step on because the carriages were pretty high off the ground. So you see them in front of a lot of houses down here. This one is in front of the apartments next door. So it was originally there for the Lasker Mansion. This one is at a house next door to the Lucas Apartments. And this one is actually in front of the Lucas Apartments. It would have been elevated at one time, but when the apartments were remodeled in 2000, they raised the sidewalk and poured it high so that it's level with the top of the carriage stone. The sidewalk's so high when you pull up, you can't open your car door. But I love that the stone itself is still there. This is an example of a new sidewalk in front of a house that was completely restored and they used reclaimed brick in a herringbone pattern, which I think is really stunning. Something else this house has that is unique is this beautiful wood carving. I know a lot of you watching are from Galveston and Houston, so you know all about this already, but I have a lot of new subscribers from around the world, so I thought they might find this fun and interesting and kind of related to our tree root problem. After Hurricane Ike, these old oaks slowly started dying from all the salt water damage. Over 4,000 of these once magnificent 95-year-old oak trees were cut down, but some homeowners hired chainsaw artists to carve their trees into sculptures like this. As you walk around the neighborhood, you'll see wonderful carvings such as these scattered up and down the streets. If you come to Galveston for a visit, you can look up and print a map online showing you where a lot of these sculptures are. Over time, more and more have been added that aren't on the map, so you really have to keep an eye open and look for these gems tucked away in yards. Local artists also collected some of the wood from the dead trees and made smaller sculptures that you can find to purchase in local art galleries. I had a huge, big elm tree in my backyard up in Houston, and it was dying, and I needed to have it cut down before it fell down on a house, so... I had the tree guy come out and give me a quote and it was going to be very expensive and I hate spending money that I don't have to. So I asked him what it would cost just to cut the top of it off so it wouldn't blow down in a storm. It was seriously cheaper than removing the entire tree. And I had what I thought was a brilliant idea. I had the tree guys cut the tree down and leave about 10 or 15 feet of it sticking up, just basically topping the tree off. And then I got on the internet and found a chainsaw artist to come carve it for me. It was actually cheaper than having the whole tree removed, so I still saved quite a bit of money. I chose this wood sprite design because there's not a lot of carving involved and it would be cheap, but I still think it's a pretty cool thing to have in my backyard. I can't remember what I was looking for online, but I even came across an article about the dead trees that I thought was fascinating. Galveston is named for Spanish General Bernardo de Galvez. He was governor of Spanish Louisiana. He played a major role in helping Americans win their independence from Britain, including sending arms and ammunition and medical supplies and money to the Patriots. The HMS West Florida was a ship used by the British during the Revolutionary War. Before the siege of Pensacola, American rebels captured it and sold it to the Spanish, who transformed it into a brig, and they renamed it Galvez Town in honor of Bernardo de Galvez. Spanish shipbuilders in Malaga, Spain are building a replica of the Galvez Town to pay homage to Galvez and highlight the role Spain played in the American Revolutionary War. Oak has historically been used for shipbuilding because it's rot resistant, as I've learned from this tree root removal process. Um, and the project was just underway when Hurricane Ike hit Galveston. Through a series of events, 390 tons of Galveston's dead oak trees were shipped to Spain for this project. 
that's a lot of connected but still random stuff for one day. So I'll stop now. Hopefully in the next couple of months, I'll have a new sidewalk to show you. There's always more to do here, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because you don't want to miss a single video. In our next installment, we're going to start rebuilding that sad alcove in the parlor. And check out our website for ways to support these efforts. I hope to see you back here at the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas.